Hey everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here, CRS the Commentary, and we'll be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34 Day 8. And this will be the uh, new format until we want to go back, or y'all let us know how you feel and you want us to go back to the old one. Uh, so, alright, so this, this is all B block action, five matches. So we first start off with Bolton Oleg versus. Uh, Yota Suji. It was a damn good match. Suji blocked the steamroller, pierced Oleg after a, a really good spear. I mean, even with the spear, and carried him it in, was a, in midair. It was a real good spear. It was one of the best ones you've seen overall anywhere in a while. Yep. Wasn't that roll through thing that folks have been doing for a few years? Yeah, they, and I don't know if they got it from Kitamura or Kitamura got it from somebody, but. After Goldberg, everyone started doing that rolling one. No matter of fact, no, before Kitamura was doing it, Moose was doing it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, are you even touching them? Yeah. It was just weird. It's like, like you just roll and they just fall back. This looked like he hit them and the momentum just flung them. So I like that. Yeah, and like they put his shoulder into him, not like a very low clothesline. That's another one way to do the spear too. Clothesline low, the body. Yeah, I'm like, that's not a spear. <laughs> nope. But uh, yeah, this this one this one was good. Yep. And then next one, we've got Yuya Wemura versus Hinare. And Hinare pins Wemura after a Death Valley driver. And I had to note that Yuya was punching him in the head many a time right before he delivered the yeah, move. He was trying to escape the best he could. Yuya also showed in this match that he's strong. Like he can he throws really strong forearm attacks yeah and you know strong strong like Hinari strong he doesn't look like he should be that strong but yeah he, he is I, I, I Yuya reminds me of a young Keiji Muto like Keiji Muto after he found himself just a year or two before he became IWGP champion ah. so I think in about two three years when Muto might have a good shot he might and it might be longer than that, no. Well, no, he came up in the dojo, so they're going to give him a little more leniency than they gave Sonata. Hopefully. Sonata had to suffer and claw. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thing. Uh, next, we've got El Fantasmo versus Jeff Cobb. And after a strike exchange, Cobb hits the capture counter version of Tour of the Islands and got the pin. He did that off of a springboard. Yeah. El Fantasmo, he he got all this stuff in in the beginning, you know the high flying stuff that he does. It landed on Jeff Cobb, took him down sometimes, but it was just a setup for his defeat. And you, whatever he's got going on, you know it's bad if your opponent is like, hey, you're not gonna be sad forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cobb was taunting him in the ring with that, <laughs> and, and I noticed that at this point, at, at the juncture of the match. I'm going to say the last half, the whole last half, El Fantasmo looked actually like he was getting gassed out while Cobb was just fine. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say fresh, but yeah, he was fine. And I can tell by Fantasmo's movements that he's a serious Kenny Omega fan. So uh, there you go. Um, next, we've got Hiroki Goto versus Ren Narita. And Narita wins with a, a back, tick, back kick to the crotch. Followed by the two-handed face buster and pin. This match turned into a hot mess, and he didn't even need anybody to come out and help him. It was just, it was just a, a mess on its own. They had sword play and push-up bar battle. Yeah, because he grabbed his ring, grabbed his push-up bar, and goes like, "Hey, I got my metal stick with the jingly things on it." You know, it, they battled a little bit, but Goto still lost. He caught in, caught in the crotch. Yep, and I was I, I I I could see halfway through it. I was like, Goto ain't gonna win this. Mm -hmm. He's he's not doing everything, and he's doing a lot of selling. You know, so he surprised me last time. We did a lot of selling and won, mm -hmm. but he also pulled out every trick that he got, yeah. every move he ever made, everything, and the kitchen sink. And this, not really. He got the Ushiguro Hoshi in. That's about it. But that's the thing. He's always gonna get in. And then we get to the main event, which is Konosuke Takeshita versus David Finley. Finley won with the suplex, knee lift, and pin. Cedra's angry that Gabe Kidd was on commentary. 
Okay, I'll get to that in a second. Shinosuke mm-hmm. had David Finley's number wrestling him in the ring, and David had to push him from the top rope to the floor to start getting the upper hand. Yeah, he, he just had, unceremoniously dumped him. He had no choice. And Takeshita tried to fight, fight back as best he could, but, you know, there was cheating involved. Ghetto the Gnome showed up. They messed with the referee. He's still the Gnome. Uh, he gonna still look like a Gnome? Yeah. All I gotta do is put him in the yard, give him a hat. <laughs> he the one that grew the beard. I nobody told him to do that. He's yeah. like a dude if it wasn't for the, the, the but he's like a gnome. Alright. Um, you know, it was an uphill battle for Konosuke battling David and, and Ghetto and David Finley spit. Into the crowd. I'm be honest with you, if I was in the crowd, I'm, the security gonna have to get me. Mm-hmm. I might look. I might run up there and get my ass stomped in. But man, you can't just do it and expect nothing. So listen, I got I got to do some some some, some commentary about David Finley and his lap dog Gabe Kid. So Gabe Kid is a good wrestler, but he's a bad guy. He's a war dog, and of course, if you are like him, the only way to be bad is to scream "fuck you" the whole match. And give middle fingers. That's the only way you can be bad. So that's all Gabe does. And so David Finley comes out there. And he's spitting. That's the way he's bad. He spits, then he cheats. Okay. And then you got Gabe out there giving his fellatio commentary. Oh, look at how, look at the size of him. Gabe Kidd is bigger than David Finley. So not only do you sound bad and you're cliche, you also sound stupid. He's trying to get his guy over. His leader. That's all he's trying to do. He failed. <laughs> okay. He failed. If we were blind, if we were all visually impaired and listening, be like, oh man, David Finley must be a monster of a man. And then I say, I don't know what red is. Exactly. So we are not visually impaired. We are not legally blind. We know what Gabe looks like. We know what Kadoske looks like. And David Finley is smaller than them. So he sounds like a dumbass. I can't disagree. I'm just, I'm just saying, let, let him get his guy over. It didn't work. He did not get his guy over. Do to better. you? Do better. Do better than fuck you and your terrible accent. I. Yeah. They David suck. in promo, his victory promo. Uh, I like how he talked about. He makes champions. And he chased off the weak. You know, he talked about the AEW people. He chased off Goon and and somebody else. So I was alright with that. I, th- I figured that was alright. You know, a Goon sucks. I don't care if you chase him off or not. Uh, uh, Jay White, he did not chase off Jay White. Someone da- dangled probably a million dollars for the Jay White. He's like, hey, why not? Yeah, <laughs> it's a capitalist. It's a capitalist world. <laughs> The whole world is <laughs> capitalism. The idea is to make money. So you might become a a, 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 a legend in New Japan, but you're going to get rich if you work for the money mark. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, I do the same thing. And I think that Boko Bomb crap stuff sucks. He's too small for that Boko Bomb to look dangerous. Konosuke Takeshita hit a nice, a Authoritative, elevated power bomb. Oh, yes! It was. It was like it was like the last ride with a little bit of steroid shot on it. I mean, <laughs> it was great. He snatched his ass down like a sack of rotten potatoes, man. It was great. But what was the big dude? Oh man, he used to have the shaggy haircut. He was in Ring of Honor. He's Canadian. And then he went away and came back, and he lost all this and was big and bald. Mike something. That was the first time we saw Jeff Cobb as Jeff was tagged up with him. Mike something. I have no idea. The only Mike's I don't know is Mike Awesome. I don't know. No, after him. Oh, I can't remember his name. He came back bald. He had a beard. I'm about to look for him. But he did a buckle bomb because he was crazy farm fed strong and just looks like the person should have just died afterwards <laughs> you can't be 
looking like a lightweight, like Finley does. You, know, you notice that I know that, no one's yeah. David is a light. He's a lightweight. He is a lightweight, but he he's, wrestles like he's a, a six foot six power wrestler. His buckle bombs look weak. I have thought so since we started watching the G1. Oh, the buckle bomb is near the end. I'm like, really? That's that's the beginning of the end? <laughs> really? You hit him in the face with a wiffle ball and that's the, that's it? That's So. It is what it is. And yeah, uh, I can't do anything about it. They're impressed with this. I'm just telling you, if I was a wrestler and he spit on me, I'm going to get fired because he's going to get hurt. <laughs> I was, you know, don't spit on me, man. I'm black, you white, it don't bode well. No, it it, it, it would don't not. spit on me. It would, no, it would not. That, you, you, you in there for your life at that juncture. You know, Scott Hall almost found that out. So, so. nasty. Yeah, I'm like, it's, it's, it's so bad enough the, the ring is going to be gross. So gross that it could give you those, uh, what, staphylococcus. Yes. So. Infections would be getting all in your muscles and shit. You got to get surgery to get the stuff. Come on, man. Yeah. Don't do that. So. Ugh. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not impressed with Gabe or Finley's healed them you know they could pack it in the car do a cross country into the sea and unless it's a heel the way you want it you won't be impressed by anybody no, that's 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 not true there are heels that are like like evil's a good heel it sucks but he is but it may the way he does it makes his matches boring okay jake lee he's a good heel i'm digging that okay that's fine outside of the spitting and stuff i like david finley i do Outside that, yeah, he, he, he's doing his job. I just, that, that, that buckle bomb, they, they, they're they trying it. It's just, I don't think the buckle bomb is a good beginning of the end. Just like I don't think Bolton Oleg's finisher that. Yeah, I call it the steamroller. Yeah, roller. it's like, huh? But, okay, you know. If you want to sell it and they're buying, cool. That's about all that matters most of the time. Yeah. So that's going to do it for us. Uh, this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34, Day 8. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>